Well, we've been married for a long time. I might find another woman I like. What's wrong with having an affair or two? Quit nagging me, shouted Anthony, my husband, defensively when I confronted him about his infidelity. Instead, prepare for Christmas. You've bought the Christmas decoration and the cake, haven't you? I'm going to my mom's house for Christmas. Upon hearing that, Anthony pulled out a folded piece of paper from the cabinet drawer and forced it into my hand. What? If you're leaving me, it's a divorce. Look, here's a completed divorce application. When I opened it, it was indeed a divorce application with Anthony's name on it. Why do you have something like this prepared? The woman who you call an affair woman, she's the only one I truly love. Oh, so that's how it's going to be. Caught having an affair with a woman 20 years younger and now he's doubling down. In a fit of rage, I signed the divorce application with larger letters than usual. The unstoppable tears are not from sadness. I'm just incredibly pathetic for being with such a man. Well then, I have to make Anthony experience something worth crying over. I packed my stuff, left the house, went straight to the after-hours window at the town hall, and submitted the divorce application. Anthony was thoughtful enough to not only put his own name on the divorce application, but also prepared a witness. What's more, it seems that woman he's having an affair with is the witness. He's really making a fool out of me. As I left the town hall, I kicked a stone lying at my feet with all my might and started walking. I'm Margaret, a 55-year-old housewife working as an administrative assistant at an insurance agency. My only daughter, Tasha, is already married and lives in an apartment in the same town. I've been living with my husband, Anthony. When Tasha graduated from her two-year college, Anthony quit his job and has become what he calls a day trader and has been living an aimless life for a decade now. I don't know whether he's making any money or not doing anything, but he's barely contributing to living expenses these days. It was I who supported Anthony while working and feeling bitter about him. And the result is this affair and divorce application. Until Tasha graduated from the two-year college, Anthony was a normal husband working at a financial institution. He did not do any housework, but he went to work in the morning and came home at night. He had overnight business trips once a month, and he had company parties or entertaining evenings once a week. He wasn't a heavy drinker nor a spendthrift. He was just an ordinary husband you might find anywhere. But looking back now, I suppose there were signs of strangeness, even back then. Given his line of work, I assumed business trips and client entertainment were par for the course, but it's possible that he was having affairs on some of those days. His one flaw as an otherwise ordinary husband was his fondness for women. My friend just got a job at the same company as Dad. My daughter Tasha once told me before she got married, Dad has a really bad reputation, you know. He's always hitting on the young women at the office, insisting on having female company at every drinking party. Apparently, he just loves being around young women. Really? That's quite embarrassing. And there are rumors of affairs, so you should be careful too, Mom. Until Tasha told me this, I'd never suspected Anthony of it. With a full-time job of my own and all the housework and child-rearing resting on my shoulders, I had no time to pay attention to Anthony's behavior. Even when I was swamped with housework, Anthony remained seated, and he wouldn't even pick up a crying Tasha when she was a little girl. He considered housework and child-rearing to be entirely the wife's duty. He seemed to believe that as long as he worked, meals would automatically be served and the house and clothes would magically be clean. At that time, I was exhausted from the double load of housework and my job, and I didn't have the energy to express my discontent to Anthony. Anthony and I are both only children. My father passed away due to an illness when I was in the sixth grade, and my mother raised me on her own afterward. It's all right, Margaret. We have your father's life insurance, and I work too. You don't have to worry about anything. My mother, who was a medical secretary, always told me with a smile. But I knew that she never bought anything she wanted for herself and used her money to support my going to vocational school. To me, she's the most respectable person and the most wonderful woman in the world. Now she's 75 years old and still living well at home. 
She has a boyfriend, and they laugh about being a couple with a combined age of 155. They always seem so happy. On the other hand, Anthony's mother was an impossible woman. One day, she ran away with her lover, leaving Anthony and his father, Jim. Fortunately, Anthony was already in college at the time and didn't need parental care, but Jim struggled to balance work with unfamiliar household chores. Margaret, promise me you won't have an affair. Jim tearfully asked me when I married Anthony. It's okay to slack off on the housework, and you don't have to always defer to Anthony. But please, I beg you, don't have an affair. There's nothing more painful than that. My father-in-law, Jim, is a man of wealth. He graciously lent us his own house free of charge, choosing to live in a small, rented apartment himself. He is a quiet, kind man who never interferes unnecessarily in our lives or imposes his will on us. I appreciate and deeply care for him. I don't want to upset him, but I suppose I have no choice but to talk about our divorce and the reasons for it. After filing for divorce, before heading to my parents' house, I stopped by the apartment where my daughter Tasha lives. I wondered if she'd be home or if I'd be imposing, but I went anyway and found Tasha was home alone. Uh, what's with this impromptu divorce? <coughs> Hearing my news, Tasha choked on her coffee in surprise. Were you okay? You <coughs> surprised me, Mom. While waiting for Tasha to calm down, I explained everything in detail. So, Dad had been preparing for the divorce long before? Exactly. It's a terrible story, isn't it? It's beyond terrible. He even filled in the witness section. He was too well prepared. Tasha tilted her head as she said this, munching on some cookies I had bought on my way. I don't know who she takes after, but she's always had a knack for seeing through situations. Then, Tasha suddenly looked up. Hasn't Dad always loved women? Well, I secretly looked at your father's computer and there were tons of unspeakable pictures and videos saved. And he was often away from home due to business trips and drinking parties, so it wouldn't be surprising if he was having an affair, but he never let his guard down before. I somehow started to get what Tasha was trying to say, but this time he carelessly exposed his affair so that I could notice. Maybe Dad purposefully made you aware of his affair so that he could be with that woman. But if you were to calmly consider divorce, there would be discussions about alimony and division of property. So he might have instigated me to impulsively file for divorce. That would explain why he had the divorce papers signed by a witness ready. And indeed, I had acted exactly that way. It's unforgivable. Indeed, as Tasha says... Even though Anthony is now an uncertain day trader, he had been working at a top-tier financial institution for many years. He must have some savings, and it's not like he would have brought all his severance pay home. If I had calmly initiated divorce mediation or a lawsuit, I could have contested Anthony's assets, I thought. Mom, we can't stay silent. We have to give Dad a taste of his own medicine. This is too much, Tasha said, grabbing my hand a strong look in her eyes as I felt tears welling up. I nod, gripping her hand back, and tears that I can't hold back appear. Regrettable. I got frustrated, nothing but frustrated. I left Tasha, who couldn't accompany me due to incoming guests, and headed alone to my childhood home. Even if you say we should give him a taste of his own medicine, he's still your father, Tasha. Are you really okay with this? Tasha sighed as if exasperated. Because he's my father, I didn't like what he did. It's embarrassing being called out by friends because my father is a womanizer. So, I'm really okay with it. If Tasha said so, I decided I'd tell my father-in-law everything. When I arrived at my childhood home, I rang the doorbell, making that decision in my mind. Coming! My mother's cheerful voice followed, and the front door opened. Her youthful face, unbelievably youthful for a 75-year-old, greeted me with a big smile. Oh, Margaret, welcome. It must be cold outside. I stopped by Tasha's house and warmed up, so I'm okay. Can I come in? Of course. Please do. You've been enjoying your time with Jim, haven't you? Sorry for the intrusion. 
Apologizing to my mother, I entered the house and headed to the living room, a small, warm house I've known since childhood, and now it's where my mother nurtures love with her special person in their twilight years. When I entered the living room, he was reading some brochure at the table. Hello, Jim. When I called out, he looked up and smiled broadly. Oh, Margaret, I thought you'd be preparing for Christmas around this time, but have you finished already? Um, yes, my mother's lover is my father-in-law, Anthony's father. It seems they both had feelings for each other for a long time, but due to their positions as parents-in-law, they suppressed those feelings. However, now in the last stage of their lives, they told me they finally decided to be honest about their feelings for each other. Anthony still doesn't know about this. Jim, as I look at my father-in-law's calm face, which doesn't resemble Anthony's much, I begin to weep uncontrollably. What's the matter, Margaret? Jim says, his face changing with concern. My mother, who had been carrying a tray with a teacup on it, must have been startled when she saw me crying. She hastily set the tray on the table and helped me to sit down. Jim, Mom, I filed for divorce at the city hall before coming here. Tears streaming down my face, I told them everything that had happened. The person most shocked by the news was probably Jim. Anthony, having an affair of all things. Margaret, I'm truly sorry, he said after listening to my story, deeply bowing his head to me. It's not your fault, Jim. You don't have to apologize. I had always told him that having an affair is the one thing he must not do. With his mother having run away with another man, I thought Anthony understood that. Jim muttered, looking pained. Then he picked up his smartphone from the table. Despite being 80, he was better at using a smartphone than I was. I'll call Anthony here. We need to talk. Leaving you without a penny after having an affair, I won't allow him to just get a divorce like that. Jim stood up and quietly left the living room. My smartphone rang a few minutes after he left. It was Anthony. I declined his call, but he called back almost instantly. After his relentless attempts, I finally answered the phone on the twelfth ring. What the hell, Margaret? Anthony was clearly upset. Dad called me super angry and told me to come to your parents' house right away. That's because of the divorce papers I filed at City Hall. But why at your parents? Why did you call Dad there? Anthony, who didn't know about Jim and my mother, was understandably confused. Anyway, you better come quickly. You know how much Dad despises infidelity, right? You told him I cheated? It's the reason for our divorce. I had to tell him. Anthony is probably wary of upsetting his wealthy father-in-law, Jim, who has been generously letting us live in his house for free. Even though Jim is incredibly spry for his age, Anthony is conscious of Jim's fortune. Is Tasha at your parents' house, too? And your mother-in-law? They're both here, along with Jim, of course. Upon hearing that, Anthony told me he'd be on his way over and hung up. He must be feeling uneasy knowing that Jim is aware of his infidelity. Jim was deeply hurt by his own wife's infidelity, which led her to abandon him. For that reason, he wouldn't forgive Anthony's affair. While waiting for Anthony in the living room, I noticed Jim was looking at something, a brochure for a nursing home. Jim and Mom, are you considering a nursing home? After skimming the brochure, I asked my mother who was sitting at the table, well, yes, Jim and I can currently take care of ourselves, but we don't know how long we'll be able to do so. We're both getting old, after all. Mom, who affectionately calls Jim by his name, doesn't look anything like a typical grandmother. So we are currently researching various nursing homes that could accommodate both of us. It's so lovely that you two are so close. Seeing you so happy makes me happy, too. But now we have a big worry. Margaret, you're suddenly getting a divorce. As Mom looked troubled and we continued to chat, Jim came back, holding a piece of paper in his right hand. I was about to ask what it was when the doorbell rang. That must be Anthony. Don't worry, I'll get it. 
With resolve, I stood up and went to answer the door. What is this? The moment he saw my face, Anthony's expression turned grim. Can't believe you told Jim about my affair, and why here at your parents' house? You'll understand once you get inside. Come on in, okay? I would have done that even if you hadn't told me to. As Anthony took off his shoes and rushed into the living room, he stopped in his tracks the moment he saw Jim and Mom sitting side by side. Their image together, reminiscent of a long-married couple, must have given him a clue about the situation. Dad? Mother-in-law, wait, are you two... Sit down there. You're dating her? No way. I said, sit down there. Jim's voice echoed in the living room like thunder. At his intensity, I found myself straightening up without thinking. When usually calm Jim gets angry, he's this terrifying. Anthony, the one being yelled at, had lost the confidence he had when he thrust the divorce papers at me and sat down in front of Jim with a frightened look on his face. I heard from Margaret, when she confronted you about your affair, you lashed back and handed her divorce papers? Well, about that. On top of that, the divorce papers were filled out and one of the witnesses was the woman you were cheating with. Is that true? Well, that was, it was just the way things went, or a difference in perception. I'm asking if it's true. Stop beating around the bush and answer me. Again, Jim's voice thundered. Flustered, Anthony mumbled a small, It's true. I'm sorry. Anthony, after you claimed to be hurt by your mom's affair, how could you do the same thing to Margaret? Moreover, having divorce papers ready and forcing her to file them? I just handed her the papers. I never thought she would actually file. You think that excuse is going to work? Do you have any idea how much your actions hurt Margaret? Jim said this as he spread out a piece of paper he had brought with him on the table. It was a blank marriage certificate. I wondered whether Anthony had brought it with him or if it had been with Jim from before. Anthony, as you might have guessed, I've been dating Margaret's mom. You've severely insulted and deeply hurt my special lady's daughter. I had no idea. I never dreamed that you and my mother-in-law would be dating. That doesn't change the fact that you cheated. Jim cut off Anthony's excuses and started speaking like a judge handing down a verdict. I'm not helping you anymore. The house I'm lending you for free, I'm going to sell it right away. Find an apartment and move out immediately. No way. I don't have the money to rent an apartment. Aren't you making money day trading? Besides... Whether you have the money or not, I'm selling that house right after Christmas, so you can't stay there anymore. But Anthony looked down for a moment, but then he noticed the marriage certificate on the table and looked up. His expression was different than before, filled with anxiety. What's that marriage license for? Surely you're not thinking of getting married. That surely is exactly what we're thinking. We're getting married. But if you do that, the inheritance I'd get from you will be halved. Anthony blurted out reflexively, then in the next moment gasped and covered his mouth. He must have realized he misspoke. But once a word is spoken, it can't be taken back. What did you just say? I decided to seize the opportunity to corner him. Your dad has always been so supportive of us, and he's been generously lending us this house for so long. Yet when he tells you he's getting remarried, you're worried about your inheritance decreasing? That's just too much. Exactly. I can't forgive what you've done to Margaret either. Until then, my mother had been silent, but she joined the conversation. Anyway, start looking for an apartment and move out. That house belongs to your dad. And if he says he wants to sell it, we can't argue with that. But I can't afford to rent two places, one for me and the other one for... Anthony muttered under his breath, then clamped his mouth shut again. But I had clearly heard what he said. Rent for him and the other person? Anthony, are you paying rent for your mistress too? My father-in-law unleashed what felt like the loudest roar of the day. I I'm sorry. You've been neglecting your contributions to the household expenses and you've been doing this? That's too much even for you. It's an insult to both Margaret and Tasha. 
It wasn't just my father-in-law, but my mother also turned red with anger. I felt so angry, I thought I was going to be sick. I've had enough. Anthony, as soon as the real estate market opens after Christmas, rent an apartment and leave that house. But I won't leave you the inheritance. I'll spend my fortune freely. In the end, we'll move into a luxurious, assisted living facility, and there will be hardly anything left for you. As he delivered his words like a blow, my father-in-law stood up and pointed towards the door. The discussion is over. Get out. But wait, I don't have that much money. Quiet. I told you to get out. Whether he gave up due to that intensity or not, Anthony stood up powerlessly, leaving the house. It seemed he was relying on Jim's fortune, living freely and showering women with gifts. I felt no pity watching his staggering figure leaving. So Christmas arrived, and just as Jim had declared, the house was put up for sale, and a buyer was found in no time. The place Anthony moved to after losing his residence was a run-down, cheap apartment. Apparently, for the past ten years, he had been living off his retirement savings without making any serious attempts at day trading. He must have thought he'd live off Jim's fortune eventually, once it was inherited. Once he couldn't pay the rent for his mistress anymore, Anthony was dumped in no time. Seems like he was luring women by dangling his supposed inheritance in front of them. Indeed, the end of the money marked the end of the relationship. Now Anthony is living a solitary life, working multiple part-time jobs. Jim sold the house and paid me all the money as compensation. I used that money to buy a small but comfortable condo where I now live comfortably. I have a pretty fulfilling life, inviting friends over for meals on my days off or visiting my parents' house in Tasha's place. On the other hand, my parents officially submitted their marriage certificate and became a real couple. The meaning of the term dad has changed for me. Perhaps being aware of that, my dad now casually calls me Margaret, seeing my mom, who had worked so hard to raise me, smile happily is truly a joy. From the bottom of my heart, I wish for my parents, clutching onto this great happiness they found in their twilight years, to live out peaceful days.